This is Mercedes-Benz X-Class, a pickup truck. Nothing strange about it because Mercedes does offer vans and trucks. There is also nothing extraordinary about the fact that this model was made in cooperation with Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi Alliance. After all, sharing of components or even entire cars across different brands is nothing new. However, whereas Nissan Navara is just a workhorse, I'd expect something more from a Merc. Does the X-Class have the X factor? For a start, the X-Class is slightly larger than the Navara. Only wheelbase remains the same, but the track width is 7 cm greater to fit a V6 3-liter engine later on in 2018. For now, there is a 2.3-liter diesel under the bonnet producing 163 or 190 horsepower. Since the car is larger, also body panels are different. The X-Class may look like the Navara, but apparently the only interchangeable parts are the door handles and the lower part of the side mirror housing. Same thing with the suspension, which according to Mercedes is the same, but slightly different. Wider track also means you can fit a Euro pallet on the pickup bed across between the wheel arches. This means with an open tailgate you can theoretically transport two pallets as long as they weigh less than 1042 kilograms. Theoretically, because the bed liner takes away a couple of centimeters and a full Euro pallet would only damage it. You can also light the bed at night. This test example also has a bed cover. The X-Class can tow up to 3.5 tons. There is also a step in the middle of the rear bumper, just like in a Ford Ranger or Volkswagen Amarok, but not in the Navara. However, tailgate is as heavy as in the Navara. I get it, it's all about protecting the load. But when I drive this car during the winter on wet roads, the tailgate is always dirty and slippery. On the other hand, if you drive a pickup truck, you probably have some heavy-duty gloves to deal with it. This is something I mentioned in my Navara review, but since this is almost a Navara, I'm going to mention it anyway. So this car has keyless access and keyless ignition, which means that the key fob is usually somewhere in your pocket. However, should you want to lock this tailgate, you need to get the key out, the fob actually, and from the fob you have to take out a key, and with this key you can lock the tailgate for security reasons, I guess, because there's also a roll cover, so you can have it all locked. Now, I suggest you make a copy of this key so you don't have to pull out the key fob all the time, because sooner or later, you're going to lose one of these, and then you're not gonna get anywhere. And the door steps. They should make getting in and out easier, but after a couple of dozen kilometers, they are dirty and slippery, so they could just as well be missing. I'm surprised Mercedes didn't do what American luxury pickups have, power folding door steps. Let's start with the positives. The cabin looks better than in your average pickup. It's also noticeably quieter. Up to about 100 km per hour, there isn't much wind noise or engine noise, which is okay. However, uh, as you drive this car, you are going to feel this is a truck. Basically, the steering ratio is not the quickest out there because it's designed for off-roading. So remember, this is what a proper off-roader feels like. When you're on a roundabout, the wheel is going to turn 180 degrees. So think about that before you buy one of these to cruise around town. On the negative side, interior design. The X-Class may have a star on a bonnet, but this is supposed to be a working man's car. You'll drive it to meet your clients, to haul stuff, you'll need a place to put down your phone, your documents, gloves, a bottle of water. And look around, do you see a cubby or a shelf? Nothing. The glove box is small, storage under the armrest too. It's also pushed back because Mercedes needed to fit its infotainment controller. And as a result, there is only one cup holder. Seriously? Not that the Navara deserves accolades for the most functional interior in the business, but the X-Class is supposed to bring luxury to the pickup segment, and what does it bring? Well, at least the door bins are large. 
Since this car is based on the Navara, the automatic gearbox lever is down here on the tunnel rather than here, where Mercedes puts it. That said, Mercedes decided to leave the wipers on the indicator stock like it does in its cars. By the way, let me know if you like this idea of having the wipers here on the indicator stock and having this tiny little automatic gear lever here. I understand in American cars you get a big proper shifter like this, but in a Mercedes, tiny little thing. Let me know if you like that. Anyway, like in the Navara, also the X-Class gets front collision warning. However, on top of that, you also get traffic sign recognition and lane departure warning, which vibrates slightly when you cross the white line. I get the impression the X-Class has a slightly stiffer suspension in the competition, not to the extent I would call it sporty, not with that steering ratio anyway, but on the asphalt the Merc does feel a bit more civilized. As standard, the X-Class gets disc brakes front and rear. I recall when testing Navara and Ranger back-to-back off-road, Nissan seemed to give me a better feel of what was going on. Perhaps it was because of the tires or manual gearbox in the Navara. The X-Class also rides on Continentals, but these are winter tires and sand in the winter is a bit harder, so I don't expect any problems, even with an automatic shifter. In the 2.3-liter diesel X-Class, four-wheel drive has to be engaged manually. The V6 model, which will appear in mid-2018, will have permanent all-wheel drive, like the Amarok. The X-Class can wade in water up to 60 cm deep. This car has optional raised ground clearance, 20 cm under the front axle and 22 cm under the rear axle. Approach angle is 24 degrees, departure angle is 26 degrees and breakover angle is 22 degrees. Maximum tilt is 49 degrees and I'm not going to try it to the max. The X-Class is available in three trim levels. In some markets, there are only two trim levels available. Anyway, there is the utilitarian pure level, which probably doesn't have much. Then there is the progressive, which gets climate control, manual, so that's pretty much AC, not climate control. And then there is this power model, which gets things like electric seats or automatic climate control. Progressive can be had with a 163 horsepower diesel with a manual or 190 horsepower diesel with an automatic. This here is the power trim, which also gets a lot of options, which make this car very expensive indeed, but we'll get to that in a moment. As far as fuel economy goes, Mercedes claims this will do about 8 liters per 100 kilometers combined. I got this much extra urban, however, for a Mercedes, this is very close to manufacturer specification. Perhaps it's because the diesel under the bonnet comes from Renault, not Mercedes. Oh, and I forgot to mention one thing. I've got this sliding window here in the back and I have no clue what it's for. If you have any ideas, suggestions, let me know in the comment section below. instrument cluster comes from the C and V class. Air vents, unfortunately, are not from the new G class. They look rather cheap. At least there are handles for the passengers to grab when climbing inside. The driver has to hold on to the steering wheel. Speaking of which, steering wheel can only be adjusted up and down. Infotainment system also comes from Mercedes with advanced satnav, etc. In the back it's pretty much Navara. The floor is high, so even if the rear bench is also raised, your thighs are in the air and your worker will have to take off his helmet, as headroom is not stellar. Under the bench there is some storage for your tools. Parking this car is easy with a 360 degree camera, which costs about a thousand euro. The X-Class is not particularly cheap, with prices starting where higher trim Navara ends. 
With options, this car costs around 53,000 euro. You could buy a decently equipped GLC for that kind of money. Which leads us to the question, who's this car really for? Is it for a successful blue collar or for a farmer or for some sort of a professional? I know a plumber, a good one and an expensive one. What does he drive? He drives a panel van. Why does he drive a panel van? Because he has these long pipes which has to fit inside the car. They would never fit here. Plus, all his equipment would get nicked if he left the car in the street. So this car is not for him. So perhaps I could use this car. It would look great. Well, it wouldn't look great because it's a pickup truck, but theoretically I could sit here with a camera and do car to car shots. That would be cool, wouldn't it? But what about my gear? Well, if I left all my gear here, it would be wet. It would get nicked probably before it gets wet. So no, and I don't want to go up and down uh, onto the bed every time I need to pick something up. So no, I put everything inside in the back seat. So there is no back seat. So this car is not for me either. So what's this car for? The X-Class can be pretty well equipped by European pickup standards, but it's nothing compared to American trucks. And what do you think about pickups? Do you prefer a bunk for your buck workhorse or a luxury rig? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to get notifications about new stuff I post. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.